Welcome to the HR on the Offensive podcast, brought to you by Lace Partners. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the latest HR on the Offensive Podcast, it's me, as always, your humble narrator, Chris, from Lace Partners. Thank you very much, as always, for joining us on this fantastic Thursday that we release our podcast. Today, we have another payroll masterclass, and I've brought in a couple of our experts. You will have recently have listened to the really, really fabulous conversation I had with Sarah and Adrian. Talked a little bit about national minimum wage. If you haven't checked that one out, then uh, please do so, because we talked about some of the challenges and issues that people face. But I've decided to get a couple of their colleagues on today to talk about something slightly different in angle. It is, of course, at the time of recording, we're getting to tax year end. And so I I wanted to get Simon Payer and Chris Kirby from our team together to talk about something that we come across quite a lot when we're talking with our client. We often say, you know, we talk about getting the basics right, but we'll delve into it in a little bit more detail about what we mean. But before I do that, let's introduce my two fabulous guests today. Simon, how are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you, Chris. And Mr. Kirby, you all right? Very good. Thank you, Chris. Pleased to be here as always. Yes, always good to have you. And normally I do introductions, but you two are seasoned pros at this now. So <laughs> I will I will park the introductions. No one want straight... to hear that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to park the introductions and go straight to today's fundamentally different question, which is a check-in question. Chris Kirby, I'm going to go to you for this first. Right. So I read today that a panther-like big cat spotted prowling through a UK farmer's field in broad daylight. That's the news that's come out today at the time of recording, slightly quirky. I suspect it's just a very, very large black cat. But my fundamentally different question to you as the check-in is, if you could see one animal in the UK as you're going out for a walk local, what would it be? Wow, I thought I'd heard it all on HR on the offensive course, but this is a curveball and a half. I would probably say a unicorn, mainly because of how happy my daughter would be and how much joy it would bring her just to just to know that they actually exist. That's really sweet. Look at you. You're just gonna <laughs> very good you're gonna clip this up. He's gonna clip this up and say, Look, Daddy, even in his work, he talks about you and unicorns. <laughs> right, Mr. Perya. Beat that. So mine, quite randomly, I think would probably be a giraffe because I saw a giraffe. I'd like to say I saw it in safari in some amazing country, but I saw it in a safari park in this country. I saw a giraffe and I just thought, how cool are they? The fact that they've got those long necks and can reach all those hard places that no one can ever reach. I think it would just be quite cool to actually see a giraffe in real life. Can I chat to it? I mean, you know, can we take it a stage further or is that just taking it too far? I mean, it's the game that you wish it to be. I mean, <laughs> we, we won't go into the, the logistics of the fact that seeing a draft on the south coast where you're based <laughs> running along the beach might be a bit of a step too far. But hey, yeah. yes, you can. No different to a unicorn. <laughs> well, no, that is true. That is true. Speaking of unicorn, speaking of utopia, that's going to lead us into look, perfect segue there. Do you like it? And into our conversation, which is about are you getting the basics? Right now, Simon and Chris, I've spoken to you guys about this for a while, and we've spoken uh, off air about some of the challenges that our customers come across. And I think because we work with quite large organizations, there's often a, an assumption that organizations just automatically are at a certain level. But what you guys have told me over time is that you'd be surprised at how many businesses struggle to get those basics right. So just, I guess, by way of introductions, I'll start with you, Simon, on this one. When we talk about what the basics are, because I'm sure there's probably people listening to me thinking, well, how advanced is my business? How do I compare to any other types of payroll functions? What do we mean when we're talking about the basics? And I think it's an interesting question because I think you can kind of interpret it in many different ways, really, in terms of, of what the basics are and what right looks like. I suppose I come at it from a perspective of thinking about the end customer. So if we're thinking about those people that are ultimately being paid, you know, when we're talking about getting the basics right, actually, we're saying that people are paid accurately and on time. 
And we'll see, we're always reading examples in the press of different organisations that don't seem to be able to do that for whatever reason. And I think, you know, we're probably all guilty of perhaps sometimes forgetting, you know, how important people's pay is to them. And that might be a almost a, a silly statement to make. But I think, you know, when people are so reliant on their pay, you know, because of direct debits they might have or whatever commitments they've got, actually, they don't care that there was a reason why their pay wasn't right. And actually, you know, almost can it wait till next month? That's not an acceptable answer. Actually, they expect to be paid what they should be paid, and rightly so. So I think it comes down to ensuring their basic payments are made correctly. And then that can open up and we can discuss more around actually getting to the root cause of what's resulted in that pay not being accurate. But I think from a getting basics right, from my perspective, is about making sure people are paid accurately and on time. Yeah. So, Mr. Kirby, from your perspective, when we're talking about getting those basics right, what kind of pops into your head from a payroll angle? I think it is the basic level and, and sort of right answering the basic questions around the usual buckets. You know, we often tend to look at payroll through the lens of, you know, people, through process, data, technology. And it's fundamentally are those things structured, set up in a way that meets the basic needs of your organization and your payroll function. So your people is your operating model in place to you know, serve the business to serve the way that you need to operate and, and ensure payroll is successful. From a process perspective, our process is optimised and, are you you know, you're not wasting a lot of time and, and, and effort in your payroll function. Then through the lens of both technology and data, it's are those things optimal? You know, what's the leakage like? You know, does the technology you've got suit the service that you need to provide your business, et cetera, et cetera? And there's those fundamental questions that I think can sometimes be lost in favour of a lot of granular detail and a lot of focus and attention on jumping to, oh, here's a solution to what we think is our problem, when actually you just needed to step back and ask the basic question of, are we in a place where we can meet our basic needs? Yeah. And do you know what's really interesting? I'd love to get your thoughts on this as well, both of you. Maybe I'll start with you, Chris, on this one, because as I said, right at the top of the show, we were talking about the fact that it's tax year end and organisations and particularly payroll people, there's a lot of stresses, a lot of pain points, pressure points that exist at this time of the year. And I guess there's possibly a tendency to almost park any of this kind of what's best practice, you know, are we going to take a look at ourselves because you're so focused in on the job that you've got to do at this time of year. And you talked about processes being optimised and stuff. So I guess the question is a few thoughts on at this time of the year, is it probably the most fundamental for a business to be looking at their kind of delivering going beyond just the basics from a payroll lens? And then secondly, let's talk about some of the types of pinch points that payroll people are feeling right now. So Mr. Kirby, so two questions loaded in there for you. And then Simon, get your take on it as well. It's this idea of, is this the right time for us to be looking at our processes, our people, our data, and because we're so busy? And then second question, again, the types of pain points people are feeling. Yeah, and I think you nailed it then, Chris, when you use the word pressure. And I think that's, you know, an ideal way to frame the feeling that most payroll teams and functions will be feeling at this time of uh, this time of year. I think, you know, the, the pressure at this time of year is largely because it has to be right. Now, payroll always has to be right. We know that. But there's always that flex of being able to correct and, you know, adjust maybe either next month or manually. And, and that is lost at this time of year when things really have to be correct. And some adjustments may not even be possible next month. I think from a is now the right time to be looking at it. Let's be fair. I think looking at it at tax year end probably isn't the right time. I think the payroll teams typically are going to be set up in a way where they can only manage a certain additional amount of, let's just call it float on top of BAU. But I think what's really important is that as tax year end often is a magnifying glass to some of the issues that there are in payroll or in upstream processes that then feed into payroll. And the tendency can be that having come out of a very busy, pressurised period to not look at the long term, you know, solution to some of those problems and to just keep on with maybe a patchwork or a workaround or whatever. And you get to next year and you're in the same position again. So I think it's about 
as you do go through some of the challenges, as you do identify some of the issues that inevitably will come up this time of year or be identified, logging those, making sure you're you're aware of those, and then getting into what was the cause of them. You know, it, it might just be my favourite phrase again. It might just be a symptom of a broader problem. So getting down to what that cause is and ensuring it's on the radar to be tackled before you then have to do the following tax year end. And I think just to delve in a little bit to my comment at the beginning of the po- of this recording, this podcast was we tend to look at things through those very specific lenses, right? And a lot of what I just said will relate to things around processes and data. You know, is it accurate? Are they robust? And and some of the stuff will be identified through there. But I think it's also relevant for technology. So with poor technology or technology that doesn't necessarily meet an organization's requirements there may even be things like system outages required at, at that time of year because you know the system's not capable of partitioning stuff that's changing while you're trying to reconcile stuff and then you have to back out a load of changes because you need to go back and change something not all technology is like that but a lot of poor technology does carry that sort of requirement and then also lastly through sort of like the lens of the operating model i think Every payroll team should have an acceptance that there is this, I mentioned float earlier, there is this additional activity over and above just standard BAU transactional and and business support that that payroll teams need to support, be that project work or whatever, and tax year end is one of those. So as teams get to this and and as companies get to this period of time and, and start to maybe experience some of that pressure, it's important to focus on actually, is there always a need? for additional support within your team? Do you always have project work that causes this kind of pressure? Do you always have ad hoc, sorry, regular things like tax year end that create pinch points in your team? And if that's the case, do you need a permanent solution to that within your operating model? Simon, I'd love to just get your take on that. Chris talked about that period of the year, that tax year end being that magnifying glass. And in some respects, if you've got a magnifying glass, it enables you to see things a little bit more clearly in terms of problems. So can I get your thoughts in, I guess, back to the two original questions, which was, is this the right time of the year to be looking at those? Let's get our basics right. And then talk to me about in your experience and some of the businesses that you've worked with, some of the challenges that they face at this time of the year. Yeah, and I think, you know, everyone kind of knows about tax year end from a payroll calendar perspective. Unfortunately, it's one of the big things up there of has to happen, added pressure, you know, potentially it's overlaid with maybe trying to plough in, you know, bonuses or additional activities from a payroll perspective. So I think, as Chris said, that kind of magnifying glass is that much greater on it because there's so much more going on at that period of time. Therefore, I think it's not the right time to be doing something actually at tax year end, but on the back of tax year end, you almost have to go, okay, let's do a bit of a step back, look at how that tax year end went, get into the whole cause and effect thing. Let's understand from a root cause perspective what was causing some of those issues and actually let's not go through that again next year because actually we can't afford to go through that kind of pain. So, you know, this is where we'll find again that we often get asked to do a payroll health check. It's often our one of our most busiest periods because after everyone's come out of tax year end, everyone is taking the opportunity to, to say, we can't do that again. You know, potentially they've done it the last few years. You almost forget about it, don't you? It's like one of those things where you kind of go, oh, I can put that to bed. I haven't got to worry about it for another year. But actually you can't keep doing that. So it's a great opportunity to take a bit of a step back, look holistically your end-to-end operation and start to identify what some of those real issues are. And as I say, what are causing these issues? So those could be pain points around, obviously, technology. That always comes up. There's a technology element to it. But likewise, that can be a kind of default, easy answer of, oh, it's the technology. Actually, again, if you go back to perhaps a root cause of it, it could be around the way the data's being sent through to payroll, for example, past some of that data you're getting from your HR colleagues, the way it's sent through, the way your time and attendance data is perhaps sent through, where you've got kind of lots of uh, disconnected workers, it might be where that information is coming out from sort of sites, for example. It could be around, you know, the processes you've got in place. So there's all kind of any end of things that could come to light. But I think as we're saying, it's very much heightened through this whole tax year end exercise. But it is a great opportunity as you come out of tax year end, kind of May, June time to say, right, we've now got time to take a step back, look at the issues and get it fixed before next tax year end. 
Yeah, certainly. Certainly, I can see some nodding there from uh, Chris as well. Simon just mentioned about taking a look at the end-to-end process. So question for you, I guess, what I'm thinking is, how do you actually start to then bring that to life? You as a payroll professional telling the rest of the business, being able to highlight some of that, some of the challenges that you face. And this feels like particularly it's a complexity sort of focused question. So, yeah, building on just what Simon said, if you could, around how do we bring to life what the end to end process is are? I mean, it can be a difficult one, right? Because sometimes there's some difficult decisions that need to be made, but sometimes they're the best decisions. And I think I always go back to people think payroll is simple, right? And the reality is that's because it could be simple. If there was one version of everything in every company in the world, then ultimately the system could probably take care of nearly all of it. And it would be fairly simple. What we all know is the reality is very, very different in, in, in a lot of organizations. And it can be as simple as an absence scheme. You know, you, you, sickness, for example, you, you could go to an organization with maybe 10,000 employees and they might have 40 different versions in one country of entitlement for sickness. And that might be dependent on the contract, their location. It might be dependent on their grade, their length of service, all that kind of stuff. And when you start to think about that through the lens of all the other things that payroll have to operate, you know, bonus schemes and all that good stuff, actually payroll can become an incredibly, incredibly complex landscape. Now, what may be happening and what would often happen at tax year end is, Yes, there will be challenges where it is purely a payroll challenge and actually something hasn't been operating properly and needs to be fixed and needs to be addressed. But a lot of it will be down to actually it was so hard in the first place and we've made it so complex as a business that if we invested the time and the effort in simplifying some of this, I mean, payroll would be far easier, tax year end would be far easier and we'd be open to far less risk. So sometimes it's about... It's not can look at the stats, you can look at the figures, you can look at the effort and the challenges that are being faced now and you can think they're all payroll. Actually, it's about spinning that mirror around a bit for, I think, the business, for HR maybe and saying, look, we're in an unwinnable position. And to be in a in a better position and to give us a much better chance of success, both in day-to-day payroll and at tax year end, these are some of the things that we should be potentially looking at, you know, harmonisation of policies, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Simon, I think this is an interesting discussion I'd like to touch on there because what I'm gleaning from what Chris was talking about there, I've just written down around the complexities question, how incumbent is it that payroll teams need to get better at being able to articulate this to the rest of the business? Like Chris has just done a really, really good job of showing a few examples of the complexity. Do you think that enough payroll teams are good enough at almost telling that story? Firstly, I don't think they should have to, ultimately, because I think payroll is so important to a business. You know, I've said before about how, um, unfortunately, not many people work for fun. You know, they work for money, ultimately. And therefore, if a business doesn't have a payroll operation, a payroll function, they're not going to be able to pay people. So you could argue, why should they need to kind of elevate their role, the activities they do? But likewise, I think sometimes seen as a bit of a kind of dark art payroll, because it just kind of happens. And that's because there are people almost just working relentlessly. You come across some of the most passionate people within the payroll functions, because everyone wants to do a good job. But these people running payroll know the importance of, and it goes back to that getting basics right again, they know the importance of ensuring that people's pay is accurate on time. Therefore, they will do everything they can. I worked with an organisation once where, because on a Monday, they always were doing, they were doing weekly pay. And on a Monday, they had to do the payroll. This one lady never took a Monday off on holiday. So she would always go on holiday, like, you know, Tuesday through, but she would always be back in on a Monday. And I mean, you know, that's some commitment to that individual, but it just shows the kind of passion. Back to your original point, you know, yes, I think we can all do our bit to try and elevate, you know, the importance of payroll. And I always talk about, you know, payroll having a seat at the table, because actually I think there is more kind of recognition for what happens within payroll. And I think it is only a matter of time. You know, we're seeing more of the kind of heads of payroll, director of payrolls that are starting to sit within organisations. And I think it should sort of sit on its own almost and just have as big a voice as a finance and HR operation. But you will often find it's any of those organisations that almost really recognise the importance of payroll that will take that step change to have that dedicated sort of head or function. 
Yeah, that's an interesting debate, probably a debate for another day, the uh, payroll standalone versus finance and HR and not being absorbed into it. I just wonder what that poor woman did on Bank Holiday Mondays, or did they just not <laughs> exist for her? <laughs> and she just had to work. I mean, she was hardcore, let's put it like that. She was I mean, very that is committed. going. That is some going. That but, you know, single going. point of failure, you know, again, is this thing of there is always a risk to that because you're very reliant on an individual. And whilst it's tremendous commitment, and I totally understand why someone was doing that, again, it's not right because it's not right on the individual to have to work the holidays around that. But also it's, it's too high a risk from an organisation because, heaven forbid, that person's off ill or away from the business on that Monday. What do they do? So, yeah. Absolutely. What do they do? And then the question there as well is, does that person even recognise their own worth almost and their own weight that they add to it? Yeah, I think to add to you know some of the stuff Simon just said as well, and Chris, you mentioned around the complexity point in payroll. I think it's something that is ever changing and is getting probably more complex. If I go back maybe 20 years because I'm I'm that old. Payroll w- was quite commonly back end and, and very transactional. And I, I've seen it for all the criticism and all of the commentary around it, that has changed and it has evolved. And there's a lot of payroll functions who are on the front foot now. But I think the, the whole dynamic and the environment that payroll operating, when you think about that end to end picture, is influenced heavily now by or should be by things like employee experience. And that's still fairly new in the grand scheme of things when you go back in a period that long. It's still fairly new. And I think it's that kind of focus that payroll people, payroll functions and organisations need to recognise that payroll can support and can play a pivotal role in. You know, Simon mentions all the time around ultimately people work to be paid and their payslip is the most important document they probably get regularly from their employer. And I think that side of things can't be overlooked. And when you look at some of the issues, when you start thinking about what does end to end truly mean, it really does mean end to end. It means everything you're looking at needs to be looked at through how does this serve our employees, not just does it get the job done and is that figure correct at the end of every month? Does it serve our employees all the way through to are we optimally serving finance and the authorities, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And obviously it goes straight back to well, the beginning of the pod when Simon was talking about focus on the end user. What is the impact on the end user? And that's that experience lens and being able to think, okay, what is the experience that's going to be received at the other end of of this process? We are almost out of time for today's podcast. I wanted to just pick up on one final sort of element that we talked about before we hit the recording. So Simon, I'll start with you. And then Chris, if there's any other bits that you'd like to add on, then that'd be great. But we talked around kind of legislative oversight as well and who's kind of responsible for it so simon can you just give a bit of context for the conversation that we've had when we didn't hit the record button on the pod well yeah i mean i think you know again i I keep using that phrase dark art don't i but you know legislation it's like quite a sort of scary topic really isn't it legislation there's always something legislative the legislation is always changing and we all know when sort of government make a sudden change and think it can Oh, instantly payroll can kind of absorb that. Again, government doesn't understand what goes on within payroll. But I think the point around the legislation is that's never going to change. The reality is it's a fundamental part of payroll and it is constantly changing. And actually, some of it is so significant that you can't afford to get it wrong. So, you know, if you look at national minimum wage, national living wage, you can't afford to get that from a legislation wrong. So actually, it's just thinking about how you are keeping up to date with that legislation, how you're ensuring you're complying with that legislation, because, you know, as I say, it's a a sort of backbone to the the payroll operation at the end of the day. Yeah, and Chris? I agree with everything Simon just said. And I think just back to the points around you know, things like the operating model and carrying the sort of float or whatever it is to be able to focus on that. I mean, if I look at some of the extreme examples I've worked in, back to Simon's point as well around single points of failure, it's not uncommon still for payroll teams to have a person who is just incredibly passionate about payroll, makes it their business to stay on top of it, even if it's not necessarily officially their responsibility, and almost by default, they therefore stay up to date with legislation. But if that person isn't around actually is the rest of the team doing that and and how are you notified i think providers and and when you look at your 
overarching operating model. Providers have a role to play there, especially in the execution of change. But wherever the responsibility sits, I think the execution of that and the management of those what are now constantly changing requirements for, for payroll systems and payroll teams, you need to be able to manage that and you need to ensure that it's an active part of your structure, your process, your operating model. Otherwise, much like tax year end, you'll just constantly keep coming up against these pressure periods where things are landing on your desk last minute and suddenly you realise you, you have no choice but to throw half the team on it. Yeah, really, really good end point there from Chris. And thank you very much just for giving us a little bit of an insight on your your thoughts around that kind of impact of legislation. You are, you're not doing it alone, but you do have oversight and, and overarching responsibility for your business. So be mindful of that. We're just out of time for today. Thank you very much, gents. It's been a really, really interesting one. And hopefully it's provided some food for thought for, for some people, particularly, as we said, at this time of the year. But just any kind of final thoughts then from you, Simon, just before we wrap up today you mentioned the point there about you're not alone i think we run a payroll community where we actually get people together to make them be able to just sort of share their sort of challenges their stories because people will often work very much in isolation within a payroll function and potentially they feel very much like they're the only one that's experiencing this and actually they're not you know they're not alone actually everyone is experiencing all these kind of things and unfortunately it's, it's kind of a day-to-day -day reality so i guess my overarching thing is when you're thinking about kind of getting the basics right and no matter how sort of difficult painful it might be you're not on your own lots of people are experiencing these things there are things you can do to kind of make it better so it's, it's just almost having the opportunity to, to to talk to the wider community to understand some of the challenges other people are facing yeah, a really, really good way to end up today. You can, of course, get access to any of our uh, back catalogue of podcasts. If you go to the lacepartners.co.uk forward slash insights, there's also a filter on there for payroll content. So if you want to read some of the interesting pieces that we've put together, you can check out the National Minimum Wage podcast. There's Complexities uh, blog, which we reference that Chris has written. There's a whole gamut of different information on there. But uh, hopefully you found this interesting today and as useful as I have. Thank you very much to you, Simon. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yep. And Kirby, as always, thank you very much. Yep. Thank you very much, Chris. Most enjoyable, as always. Most enjoyable, as always. And very particularly interested in your uh, choices of what animals that you'd like to see uh, running along the beaches on the south coast. But from myself, from Chris, and from Simon, thank you very much for listening. And we'll catch you next time on the HR on the Offensive Podcast. Bye bye.